the original bathroom in this 1920s house. This is the last room that I've had to tear out with uh, lath and plaster on it. I don't know if I've told you yet how much I hate lath and plaster, but the only thing good about lath and plaster is when you see the dumpster leave with it in it. So anyway, as is with any of these old houses, the, the studs aren't square, they're not on center, so you've got that to contend with. The ceiling joists are running this way, and so is my shiplap running this way. So to have anything to nail that shiplap into, like right here is a, uh, a half inch plywood nailed across, uh, uh, screwed it in, screwed it down there, screwed another one there, screwed another one down there, and now I've got something that I can nail this shiplap into. So, you know, I, you've, if you've watched my videos, you know that I work alone. And I was hoping to put these pieces up in one piece, but it turns out that I didn't have room to manipulate them in here. So I'm having to put them up in two pieces. And of course, when you do that, you don't want your joints the same. You want to stagger your joints. So, there's some tricks. Um, I'll set this camera up and uh, put one, uh, you can watch, I'll set this camera up and you can watch me put some shiplap on the ceiling by myself, if that's how you do it. But, uh, this is 1800's shiplap. This is not shiplap like you would go buy in a store that's nice and straight and everything's even and all beautiful. This is hayloft. In fact, I think this shiplap came out of a grain bin. But it's got little, you know, abnormalities. It doesn't line up quite straight. You're always having to bend it. Um... And with this stuff, in fact, I know it came out of a grain bin. They sprayed that grain bin uh, with something for bugs. And so when I went to paint it, that, whatever that was they sprayed it with, just kept coming through, coming through, coming through. I used a full gallon of kills and a full gallon of my uh, it's called frost uh, and bear paint a full gallon two full gallons on ten pieces of shiplap it was a nightmare I've never run into that I've used a lot of shiplap out of barns haylofts and even grain bins in barns but I've never never run into that. Usually I can put on one coat of kills, one coat of my paint, and I'm good. But my gosh, it took two full gallons to cover this. So that was a nightmare. So before we get into this, I want to tell you that if you um, take down Let's say you're going to go take down a barn or two, or you have a barn and a grain bin, and use that shiplap. When you get that shiplap out of different places, it may not be the same width. It may not be cut the same, the lap portion of it. Even in a barn, the hayloft shiplap may not be the same as the shiplap you get out of the grain bins in that barn. And so when you go to put it up, you may have a board, let's say, is seven and a half inches. And then there'll be one that's six and three quarter, or, or seven and three eighths. It, it is, 
you better be ready for for a real headache but what I do um, you know in, in the living room I fought that all the way across the ceiling it was a living nightmare but what I do now is if in my stack I have different widths maybe one seven and a half seven three eighths to get them to match when you put them up is a nightmare so I'll run them all through the table saw on one at one side, run them all through, cut them all the first you figure out what is your narrowest one. So if you've got a board that's seven and a quarter and seven and a half, choose the seven and a quarter, run them through the table saw, rip them all the same, and then go back and run them through the router and put that lip back on them and now you don't have a problem other than the fact that they may be warped or something like that but you can deal with that so anyway that's a warning when you work with shiplap um, if I think of something as we go along here I'll, I'll talk about it but <clears throat> right now uh, let's put up some shiplap and I'll show you uh, some little tricks when you work alone. So what I'm using is 18 gauge brad nails um, and I'm using an uh, inch and a half. This is three quarter inch board. I've got half inch plywood that I'm nailing into. So that's plenty and the brad nails are small. When I'm all done I'll go back and I'll paint over those and it'll just fill them in. They'll just disappear. So the gap I'm putting in a quarter quarter of an inch gap and this is just you know anything you got laying around I've got scrap laying around so that's what this is so the main thing the first thing you do is get the first one up and nailed and then the rest of it I'll show you how you how you work with that because remember you're alone I don't have the luxury of having anybody help me everybody's working so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there and I'm going to shoot a couple nails in there alright so that's that. Now, that gap is good. It looks pretty good on down there. This gap is tight. So get your board and your pry bar. And Place it in there and have them have more than one. So if you drop it on the ground, all right, that looks pretty good. Shoot a couple nails. All right. Now. So what it did is it closed this gap. There we go. There's that gap. Okay, now so that 
that gap's just a scotch. So the the beauty of using these brad nails is they'll bend. So I need to close that gap a little. Not bad. What I'm doing is feeling for the edge of that half inch plywood across there. So how did I come about choosing a quarter of an inch gap? As mentioned, this old plywood, I mean this old shiplap, it's not necessarily straight. It could be off a little bit. If you use an eighth inch gap and it's off a sixteenth of an inch, it's really going to show. If you use a quarter inch gap and it's off a sixteenth of an inch, it's not going to show so bad. That's why I use a little wider gap. Now, if you recall in my other videos, I've shown you this tool right here before. This is a must-have tool. Because right here, one of my 18-gauge nails went in and hit the screw head when I screwed up, you know, this half-inch plywood. And so it hit it and curled back out. That would be hard to get out. You can't get it with a hammer. You can't get it, you know. You can... But this little guy right here. There you go. That is how you... That is a tool that you need. And they're about... I looked on Amazon here a while back to see how much they were. Now that, that's, I'd say a while back, it's probably a year ago. So they're probably more now, but then it was about $80 tool. So you start off by matching it right there. Shoot a couple nails in. Alright, now come down here. You know, that seam right there has to be perfectly straight. And then, uh, and then I've got my quarter inch here. So that is that row. That looks pretty good then. 
All right, so when I cut the hole for these, these are six inch. See how thin they are? If you have no space, now you will need this much somewhere for the wiring, because there's a box. But you can move that around. Uh, so, what I'll do is I'll cut those holes, I'll reach up in there and find my wiring, pull it through, and we should be good. Um, but when I cut those holes, it's going to cross over two boards. So if I muff that, I've ruined two 1800s boards. You can't afford to do that. So measure, 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 double measure, triple measure, and try to not cut those wrong. So I'm 31 inches, 36, 36, 31. And the, the tub and shower go on that end. <laughs> So it's time to finish up this ceiling in this bathroom. Another thing you want to keep in mind, so another thing about these uh, shiplap, um, it, you know, they, they can be long boards. When you pull them out of a hayloft especially, they, they might be 16 footers or, I don't know if I've ever gotten 20s 16s realistic well I don't know why or how it was made back in the day but you pull off these long boards <coughs> and then you, um, when you go to use them they, and so look at the ends of those boards because that last hell oh, I don't know two feet maybe it'll start tapering down so if you have a seven and a half inch board down there on the end it might be seven and a quarter and so it's not real noticeable but it will screw everything up so measure your boards chop those ends off if you if you find that uh, if you buy wood from a, if you don't take it off yourself, you buy wood from a reclaimer, they may have multiple buildings in that stack of uh, shiplap. 
and as mentioned earlier uh, and they're not trying to cheat you or anything it's just that it doesn't matter to them uh, but remember uh, measure you know if they're seven and a half inch boards <coughs> To measure them so these are seven and a half but when I go up there to my yard and pull pull wood there may be seven and three-eighths in there even seven and a quarter because it's off more than one building so unless you're putting them up in full sheets then that doesn't really matter but if you're putting them up in pieces and you're having to uh, match the ends big deal so uh, if you get into that measure the narrowest board run them all through the table saw rip them get them the same width and then run them through the router and put that lip back on and then uh, it'll save you a ton of headache in the long run so let's just move on and get this done I'm gonna I'm gonna end up filling these nail holes up here but that's later all right so working with this old wood it's never ending trying to fit them so I think what I'll do is come right out here that's not a bad edge you just want those lines to be straight all the way down Um, okay, I'm going to go back out here. So the, this wood, this piece has an ever so slight bow in it. So I'm going to have to adjust that. So what I what I ended up doing is I'm just going over every seam. <clears throat> you know, you're looking at this ceiling from eight feet. And so you're close. And I just want to make sure that it all looks good. So I'm cleaning up all of the seams. And then my final, so I laid down a bead of caulk in there and I ran it this way. But to make sure it all blends in with the board, I'm gonna blend it out this way with the wood grain. You may not have to, but that's what I do. Um, so here in Kansas, it's right now, I don't know, 25 or so outside. Got a bit of a cold front. A little bit of snow, not much. Uh, But it gets its winter. Huh. So it's supposed to warm up though, I think, here. Uh, uh, today's Saturday. So I think, uh, I don't know if it's over the weekend or next week. I think we're supposed to get back up into the 50s. That's how Kansas is. You know, you'll be cold. Finally put ice on the lake for ice fishing. And then you turn around and it's... Next thing you know, it's warming up into the 50s. Your ice goes rotten. So, 
when we get ice on for ice fishing, it doesn't stay. Maybe, maybe a week, maybe two weeks at the most. And then the next thing you know, we have a week of warm. There it goes. Now, when I was a kid, it was, you could count on ice. We had ice all winter. We ice fished. You know, I was younger. I was in high school, right out of high school, grade school. Me and my dad went fishing, ice fishing all the time. You knew everything was going to freeze up. But nowadays, not so much. So if you watched my other videos, you remember one where um, my grandson Cash, he uh, made a, we made a memorial for his horse Addie that died. Well, since that time, Cash has, he had Gus. At the time of that video, Cash's other horse was Gus. So, since that time, uh, he, he has another horse. They bought him another horse, a barrel horse. So now he's got Gus that does poles, goats, um, and then he's got another horse that's barrel horses for uh, running barrels. So he is out at Dodge City right now for Young Guns Rodeo. Uh, he's in two, two winter rodeos, Heartland Youth Rodeo. Um, that's over here at Kingman, Kansas in the indoor arena and that'll go all winter. And then out at Dodge City in the indoor arena at Dodge City is Young Guns Youth Rodeo and that's where he's at this weekend. So that's the update on Cashman. I think I'm done with silicone so now I'm gonna I need to run down to the hardware store, get some spackle, and then fill these, and then paint over it, and we're good to go. It's looking, looking really good. Looking good.